Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market and let's figure out what is happening to Tesla and what we can expect moving forward. So as usual, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button as it does help a lot. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is down below. If you're interested in my intraday thoughts on Tesla, et cetera, et cetera, as it's moving throughout the day, $3 a month, link in the description. But let's just jump into it. Tesla closing the day up beautifully, almost uh, about 2% on the day putting us at about $257 per share, which compared to the market is a slight outperformance, which is good to see. But let's discuss what this all means for Tesla. So first and foremost, obviously we talked about that potential bearish looking candle yesterday, but that's why in the title I said I had the text. However, because as usual, you always need follow through. We clearly didn't get follow through. And I also mentioned how, you know, similar situation that we had back here obviously it doesn't have to go the exact same way you know the exact same candles in the exact same pattern the exact same way but the kind of the idea is similar and so far it's kind of you know it's still somewhat similar right it was a bearish candle this one actually did follow through even further before getting a massive bounce and an absolutely astronomical rally following that here instead we got the bearish candle which still ended up being a false alarm but just we had a pretty nice green day today instead so you know similar but different right like i said it usually rhymes it doesn't just replicate itself entirely it usually rhymes anyway but let's talk about what this all means so first and foremost there's a, a few things i added to this right let's take a look at the daily first so i i have these two lines from down here right so there's the green line and there's the blue line not really sure which one i like more maybe in the comment section you can you know you can let me know what your thoughts on this are i'm still kind of you know looking at them kind of deciding which one i like more but i'll give you a quick you know uh, rundown of what they are so first let's talk about the green one from the lows over here back at 105 on the daily right the green line is a line that touches as many candles as possible during remember that massive channel that we were in that we drew like several times right i'll just very quickly illustrate it right remember it looked like remember it looked something like this all right that large channel that we were in right that's the green line that's one of the potential bottoms of that channel the green line where again during that uprise uh it, it essentially has you know or touches as many candles as possible right it even touches this candle here it touches them here right and no candle really truly truly like really close below I and mean, we had this one false alarm here but you know beautiful follow through the next day regardless so for the most part no candle really truly close below it anything you know convincing rather so that's that right and then of course we have the breakdown uh post earnings etc the other option is the blue line where it doesn't really touch many of the candles it only touches the really bottom part of it over here right and it doesn't really touch them again again up here however it does touch us several times as we've technically arguably have been getting rejected by the blue line over here during this current little uptrend that we are in as you can see it touches several several times including pretty much yesterday and almost today so not sure which one i like more between those two but you know in this case the blue line does fit this situation pretty well and we could be in this ascending channel or ascending wedge which unfortunately usually breaks down to the downside so you know take that for what it's worth it could be a little bit concerning but the way I look at it is this, if this is actually a little bit of a downward wedge we find ourselves in, so essentially you can even cut this part off like even before this, right? Just as if we just started from here, right? Could be a potential ascending wedge. And if we break down from this, which again, technically it's a bullish pattern while you're in it, but usually it breaks down to the bearish side. All that could mean to me is simply a retest, right? That all can that mean is just a retest where essentially what we'll do is we'll come up, maybe dance a bit more, maybe even go a little bit higher. We'll talk about that soon. But ultimately, let's say from just this general 260 area, it's very possible that we potentially bounce or uh, uh, drop down from there and then sometime maybe you know late december maybe you know or maybe even early january who knows how long it'll take but the point is is the fact that you know we could potentially break down from here and then bounce from this get a retest of that bull flag and of course continue making our way up even further that is always a possibility right um so that's just one option obviously it doesn't have to play like that technically this can also just break to the upside it doesn't mean it has to break to the downside it just more often than not it does but of course, it's nowhere near 100%. If it was, it'll be just way too easy. You would just completely all in or short here. That's several, several months out, and you're pretty much guaranteed to make money. It's just not that easy, right? Things can always change. So take that into account. Remember, we had that bearish uh, pennant over here. I believe it was down over here, and then ended up breaking to the upside, which was this move right here. Same concept, right? Just because it's a bearish pennant, and more often than not, it does break down to the downside. Not always, because it'll just be too easy if it was always the case. Same idea here. Now, with that being said, taking another quick look at the daily RSI, we have RSI looking great, actually looking very healthy, making higher highs along with the stock, looking great. Honestly, not nothing I can really fault for. If anything, I would argue it looks more bullish than bearish. So 
our side's looking great. Even if we get a drawdown, it's 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 still looking good. Like nothing's concerning me about the R side. The MACD's still looking great. Nothing concerning there. We're still above the volume profile so far, which is great as well, right? You know, there's massive volume over here. So even if we come back down to retest, we're just pretty much gonna be getting the support hopefully off this massive volume profile, pretty much in the 240s, low 240s as well, which hopefully we get that bounce. And if we do get that retest, which I hope happens sooner than later, because the longer that retest of this massive breakout of this bull flag takes, well, the bull flag technically is still descending, right? So the retest will be a little bit lower than you know what i would like to see would enter us into the potential 230s like very high 230s which gets a little bit risky there so the sooner we get the retest the better in my opinion but obviously retest can take a quite a long time right we could be we can completely rock it from here and before any retest and in theory we don't even need a retest that's also another thing right nothing is guaranteed not every single time you have a breakout or a breakdown you get a retest it's pretty common but not always this could be one of those cases too. So there's a lot of things that you have to take into account, right? You have to play the level by level. So that's kind of the daily. But overall, what I'm looking at and how I'm seeing the daily is pretty nice close today. Pretty, 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 you know, pretty okay candle. Not the best, not the worst. Uh, options flow. Uh, seemed uh, pretty mixed, right? We have a lot of bulls and bears, right? There's some decent uh, ones coming in over here, right? We have another one over here, almost 1 million in premium puts, but the calls are a lot more calls, but they're just smaller in size overall. So it's, you know, it's, it's a bit mixed, right? The options flow is definitely a little bit mixed here. Nothing too obvious to one direction, but the way I look at it from this is with the close like this, because it is a higher high close and the RSI is still looking great. The MACD is still looking great. Wouldn't surprise me if we maybe go sideways or maybe ever so slightly edge our way back uh, upwards, continue to go upwards and, uh, Looking at the weekly, it'll give a better idea. We could potentially even come up to my main price target, which again is close to 265, where these two lines intersect, right? Uh, the blue line and the red line, the red line being the final boss trend line, the blue line being pretty much one of those lines I just talked about on the daily chart, right? Uh, and it, it pretty much intersects together pretty well. Uh, you can see a lot, nice little support here, decent bounces pretty close to it, acts, acts as a resistance over here as well, so far. And 265 is roughly where they kind of intersect and that would be like the like the real level to like the true test like the real level tesla would want to break in order to continue uh moving even higher which it's possible we'll see when we get there right um so that's kind of what i see looking at the 65 minute chart very quickly we could be potentially making this tiny little bear pennant once again similar to what we had over here this was more of an ascending triangle in my opinion it could have been a bear pennant arguably but same idea here roughly you can make a you know argument that it's Similar uh, idea, right? Where, you know, very small bear pennant, very, very small, uh, looking like potentially it might break out if this does break out. I think sometime this week it might take us to 260 to 265, but I'd be surprised if we go much higher than that this week at least. Obviously, never know with Tesla once this thing goes, it really starts going, but I'd be pretty surprised if we go much higher than like 265, which is my main price target, right? At least this week, right? Maybe next week, who knows, but this week I'd be pretty surprised, right? So we'll see. That's kind of the main things I'm looking at there. Uh, another thing to note is we are potentially starting to set up some, you know, signs of a bearish divergence. The MACD did cross bearish, so it's a little bit concerning on the one hour here, right? Or 65 minute. Uh, we also have, of course, 65 minutes showcasing, again, potentially some bearish divergences as we're making higher highs. RSI is absolutely not making higher highs. So a little bit of a bearish divergence now setting up. Not the most obvious thing in the entire world, but, you know, it's definitely not not obvious, right? So, or not obvious, I don't know, whatever. It, you know what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, it's there. It's absolutely there. So some caution, in my opinion, is warranted for the one hour, which, you know, is like the kind of the time frame I would look at for the movement for, let's say, maybe the rest of this week, roughly, give or take, like the next three days. This is what the one hour usually tells me, give or take. So because of that, you know, even if we go a little bit higher, I think all we're gonna, all we will be doing is potentially just continuing to set up this bearish divergence and it's going to become more prevalent. And I think ultimately we will, um, it will eventually play out. It's just a matter of when, not if. Now, obviously, if we do, let's say, move up to 265, let's say tomorrow or Thursday, there's a potential that we make a higher high on the RSI and that ends up completely messing up that bearish divergence, which is also possible. So we'll see. But ultimately, this is technically a bullish little situation here setting up. It could potentially play out to the upside if we break above about 258, I would say, and really start closing candles above 258. That's kind of the main thing I'll be looking for. And if we do that, uh, and especially 260, I think 265 should be next. And then from there is where we really enter some pretty serious resistance where I wouldn't be surprised if we finally get some form of rejection, maybe a bit of a cool off before hopefully we actually break through it the next time. So we'll see how we react. We'll see what kind of candles we print uh, specifically once we reach that ma main level of about 265-ish, give or take. So yeah, that's the main thing I'm looking at right now, right? Again, the weekly is probably the best way to look at it in my opinion right now. We still have a massive head and inverted head and shoulders, which is bullish. Our size looking great. The weekly MACD is still flipped bullish, which is great. There's still, of course, three more days, so that can change. But looking not bad, man. The weekly is looking pretty decent other than the fact that we are approaching like pretty phenomenal resistance, which would, is going to take a lot of 
working on really like a lot of pressure to you know break through and continue this movement to the upside the uh, squeeze indicator is still building up a squeeze the red circles are still very much there so take that into account as well so they're not gone the squeeze is building the rsi uh, sorry the uh the squeeze on the daily is still building so there's still a lot of momentum building we'll see where it gets unleashed I don't think it'll be to the downside. I do think I'm, I am more biased to the upside than to the downside if I had to pick a direction, because even if we do come down, I don't think it'll be a big move to the downside. I think it'll be nothing more than a retest, which is pretty much the 240s, like the low-ish 240s. And I'd be surprised if we go lower than that. And if we do continue doing that, and let's say we do come down to the 240s to retest, I don't think the, the TTM squeeze meter is going to like show that a squeeze is pretty much about to happen. Like it's, it's not going to show that it's been picked. You know, the direction has been picked to the downside if we do come down that low because it's really not that much lower from here. And we even had these moves like this massive one from the from earnings. We had pretty nice rallies here and the TTM squeeze still showed red circles. It still didn't pick a direction even on such movements. So, yeah, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that there is a pretty substantial amount of momentum building up a pretty like a quite a lot of pressure building up on the weekly here i don't can't remember the last time we've seen this many circles one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i think 12 i'm not mistaken one more time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah 12 red circles in a row I don't remember the last time we had this many maybe like back here one two three four whatever i mean pretty close to back here so i don't know the point I'm trying to make is that there is quite a lot of pressure being built up, and we'll see which way it decides to go. But all in all, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. TLDR, I expect potentially a little bit more room to the upside, but I wouldn't be surprised if we reject closer to 260 to 265. And then ultimately from there, we'll have to revisit, see how the candles are looking. Do we get a retrace or retest the 240s, or do we just push through because the candles are still looking strong? We'll see if we get there and when we get there. But all in all, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, and as usual, see you tomorrow. Peace.